When the wreckage was found, it was a shock to learn of the tragic loss of the Titan submersible vessel, which was intended to explore the Titanic wreck. Midway through its descent to the 12,500-foot depth where the enormous ocean liner lies, the submersible lost contact with its surface support crew. According to the latest information from the Coast Guard and Navy, the submersible apparently suffered a catastrophic system failure while traveling to the ocean floor and imploded. On the day of the dive, according to NPR and other sources, Navy acoustic detection equipment detected what was probably the vessel's implosion, though it is unknown whether that was the precise moment of implosion. This loss raises a lot of questions about what goes on beneath the ocean's surface, and it might even make people worry about the safety of submarine teams that frequently spend extended periods of time deep below the surface. The maximum descent distance for modern, Los Angeles-class submarines in the American arsenal is estimated to be around 3,000 feet, with a safe dive depth of about 1,500 feet. What would happen if a submarine continued to cruise past these safety limits, though? Simply put, hull and system failures are not an accident, and the Titan submersible's demise is not a coincidence. When it comes to the intense pressure of the deep-sea environment, explosions and destruction are the norm. A submerged watercraft that can operate independently is called a submarine. It differs from a submersible, which has less capability for diving underwater. Large, manned vessels are most frequently referred to by the term. Oceanography and archaeology are just two examples of the many scientific fields where submarines are used as research vessels. They are also employed in anti-submarine, mine laying, and drug interdiction operations during an undersea conflict. Although the precise information on submarines' resistance to ocean pressure is typically classified, there is some open source data available on their design, testing, and maximum operational depth. The material used to construct a submarine and the size of its hull has a significant impact on how long it can withstand the pressure of the water. An underwater research vehicle can travel farther than a submersible. While underwater research vehicles are designed with the ability to navigate and search, submarines are designed for a variety of reasons, such as stealth, sound absorption, science, maneuverability, etc. Another important factor is the price. The largest, military-style submarine that could dive the deepest was the Soviet K-78 Komsomolets. Its titanium hull made it very expensive, but it could endure much deeper dives than the best subs made of high-grade steel, like American nuclear subs. The Komsomolets was a nuclear-powered submarine built specifically to travel as deep as 1,300 meters 4,265 feet below the surface of the ocean. Specialized submarines are capable of diving much deeper. A maximum depth of 2,250 to 3,000 meters, 7,500 to 10,000 feet is suggested by the USDSLV Deep Submergence Rescue Vehicle, which was designed to save survivors of a sunken submarine. Its test depth is 1,500 meters, 5,000 feet. The Marianas Trench, a few hundred miles east of the Philippines, contains the deepest point in the ocean, the Challenger Deep, where a small submarine named the Tree reached a depth of 10,916 meters 35,813 feet below sea level. Since this region of the ocean is 11,034 meters 36,200 feet deep, it appears that a sub can travel as far below the surface as it is physically possible to do so. The light hull and the pressure hull are the two main parts of a submarine hull. Submarines have special structures called hulls that can hold water, which keeps the sub buoyant underwater. The outer, non-watertight hull of a sub is its light hull, and it offers a hydrodynamically effective shape. Due to the equal pressure on both sides, the light hull is typically constructed from a thin steel plate. There is a sturdy hull, or pressure hull, inside the outer hull that can withstand the outside pressure and maintain normal atmospheric pressure. The pressure hull typically has a complex structure made of thick, high-strength steel and a large-strength reserve. 
subs can also be constructed out of carbon steel or titanium. Although titanium is more stealthy, it cannot be used for multiple dives because the metal tends to become brittle. Let's check the effects of water pressure and crush depth. When the internal pressure of a submarine is greater than the external water pressure, the submarine starts to collapse. This is known as the crush depth. Submarines can normally only operate down to a depth of about 2,000 feet. The intense pressure of the water at that depth is to blame for this. Deep sea travel puts a strain on technology, but submarines are designed to withstand it. For reference, typical smartwatches frequently have a water resistance rating of approximately 5 atmospheres of pressure, or about 50 meters or 164 feet. Humans, watches, and submarines are all subject to five times more pressure at this depth than they are at the surface. Any sub can dive to a certain depth without endangering itself, and this depth is frequently reached for exercise. Engineers involved in the development and design of the boat then determine the theoretical maximum diving depth. Since it incorporates a level of caution, this can theoretically be exceeded. If the boat goes any deeper than this, it will implode due to the sub's crush depth. It is possible to determine these limits, but there is no way to predict the precise crush depth absent an accident. Other elements that affect a submarine's endurance are the age of its hull and how far it descended past its maximum depth. Submergence cycles are used to estimate a submarine's hull life because every time a submarine submerges and goes deep, its hull life is shortened. Hull life decreases when test depth is exceeded. The question of how cost-effective it is to keep the sub active then arises. Submarines can reach a number of critical depths, including test depths, without suffering any operational consequences. Systems are tested and certified under this pressure when they are exposed to sea pressure in submarines. Even the hull of an underwater vessel built to travel deep can eventually succumb to the pressure. The crush depth designates the depth at which a submarine will cross this crucial line and succumb to the depths of the ocean. A submarine may potentially cross its maximum dive depth and surface again because depth ratings and actual maximum diving distance aren't always the same. Testing this limit, however, is undoubtedly risky and may easily cause a significant loss of life. An implosion occurs when a submarine reaches crush depth. The hull system that enables these ships to sink so deeply loses its capacity to withstand the extreme pressure from the environment outside, and the submarine's walls will eventually be unable to keep the water out. The submarine will fill with water as the ocean crushes the vessel, obliterating everything inside. Unfortunately, the crew on board is not spared from this wreckage. Equipment, parts and supplies fly throughout the hull of a crushed submarine, and the force of the onslaught of water is sufficient to render unconscious anyone unlucky enough to experience this result. It's also not really possible to escape. Even if someone were to don their scuba gear to flee, the typical maximum diving depth for skilled technical divers is only about 350 feet. The rush of water will undoubtedly kill anyone on board. Did this catch your interest? Please subscribe to Weather Collapse if you want to know more and be updated on the latest news about natural calamities or disasters happening all over the world, and don't forget to like today's video. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.